glory, 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 this evening we worship and magnify and glorify and gather round and about that matchless name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. We thank you, Lord. At the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Of things in heaven. Of things upon the earth. Of things under the earth. We are confident tonight, Lord. And I agree with the songwriter that indeed chains are falling. But we have not gathered in your presence tonight, Heavenly Father, for frivolity. We have gathered with an expectation in our hearts. Your word said that they go from grace, strength to strength, all of them that gather before the Lord in Zion. And in the name of Jesus, because we have gathered tonight, online and on-site, I declare that we go to a new dimension of strength. We go to a new dimension of testimony. We go to a new dimension of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that eyes are open to see, ears are open to hear, hearts are open to comprehend the truth of your word. I declare in the name of Jesus that doubts are dissolved, bondages and burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed. Men and women step into the next phase of their destiny. For the path of a just man is as a shining light, it shines more and more to the perfect day. Lord, we receive this tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you because prophetic parables of life are interpreted. We thank you because pathways of, pathways of life are unveiled. And ultimately, your people move upwards and forwards. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We call this service tonight a supernatural success. And we thank you, Lord. We honor you. And we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Let some of that group that prayer shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let some of that group that prayer shout amen. amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is our year of ever-increasing glory. And this is our season of great joy. I pray that your hearts will be open to receive instructions from Almighty God. You see... Little hinges, it is said, swing open big doors. And we never gather in God's presence just for gathering's sake. And so tonight, I trust the Lord that the Lord will deliver your heart desires to you in the name of Jesus Christ. As we partake of this great mystery the Lord, our, uh, the Lord Jesus instituted for us before he left the earth. As we partake of the Lord's Supper tonight, there are workings of miracles. I said there are workings of miracles. I said there are workings of miracles. Things are going to be resolved. Things are going to be added to you. Undesirable things are going to be subtracted from you. And you're moving forward to the next phase of your destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's lift up our hands and just thank the Lord tonight. Father, we thank you. We are receivers tonight. Of your fullness have we all received. Grace upon grace. Love gift upon love gift. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' precious name. Prophesy to your neighbor and say, welcome to church tonight. Say, this is your father's house. You will not regret coming here tonight. Say, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that your testimonies are multiplied. Your testimonies are multiplied and your joy knows no bounds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, put those hands together and give the Lord a shout of praise one more time. Glory, 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 glory. Please be seated in God's holy presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Welcome again to this great service in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This great communion, word encounter and communion service in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome all of our brethren, our family online, wherever you are, anywhere in the world. We trust that the same anointing of God's spirit that we're enjoying here is your experience wherever you are. We part alike in the blessings and benefits of communion tonight. And we trust that there are workings of miracles for you there also, wherever you are in Jesus' name. The Bible says, whosoever believeth upon him shall never be ashamed. And that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. This is our year, like I said, of ever-increasing glory. This is our month of great joy. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We've tried to define what we mean by great joy. And when the Holy Spirit gave us this theme, great joy, as we see in God's word, is tied to manifestations of the goodness of God in our life. Hallelujah. There is joy and there is great joy. 
We have shared, and I want to just mention it because it bears repetition from the scriptures. We're not going to go over it in detail because we've been dealing with it in our past sessions by God's grace. When the Bible uses the phrase great joy, there are specific things attached to it. So when the Holy Spirit says it's our month of great joy, we can go to the scriptures and find out what great joy means. First and foremost, we found out from Luke chapter 2 that great joy was, was brought to introduce into the human equation as a redemptive word. At Jesus' birth, the Bible said, when those angels were talking to the shepherds, they said that in this day born to you in the city of David is Christ the Lord. You go there, you find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. And the Bible said they began to rejoice. And the Bible said there was great joy. So I said that the introduction of the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, into the life of a believer, is not just for you to... How do I put it? Mark attendance in a church, but it's introducing you into the anointed life. The life of possibilities. And I want to say to you, dear child of God, that every challenge in your life is an opportunity for a testimony. The greater one lives within you. Hallelujah. And therefore, you have come into a life of no limits. You have to walk in the consciousness of this. That there's nothing that that, that greater one in you cannot do. Are you here somebody? He's greater than sickness. He's greater than disease. There's no such thing as no way out with that greater one. So the life of faith is a life of constantly living in expectation. In expectation of the manifestations and the mercies of God. Hallelujah. And it's so important for us to keep that in our mind. That's number one. And then number two, we saw in Acts chapter 8. The Bible said concerning Philip, after that re revival came that dispersed the church. And they went everywhere, preaching and teaching and sharing the good news of Jesus. Philip went, the Bible said, to the city of Samaria. And the Bible said there he preached Christ. And when he began to preach about the anointed one, signs, wonders, and miracles began to break out. The Bible said people had palsies, paralysis were healed. Demons were cast out of people. All kinds of sicknesses, unclean spirits were cast out. All kinds of sicknesses and diseases were healed. And there were diverse miracles everywhere. And the Bible said as a result of that visitation that the city of Samaria experienced great joy. So we see that great joy is a manifestation. And that is the anointing that has come upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Great joy is your portion. Great joy is an anointing. Hallelujah. So, great joy are the result of miracles, signs, and wonders. So, I'm expecting in your life an escalation of signs, miracles, and wonders. Glory to the name of the Lord. Then again, we saw in Acts chapter 15 verse 3, the Bible talked about the fact that the disciples went about. And as they went, they noticed that many multitudes were added unto the kingdom of God. And the Bible said there was great joy as a result of the conversion of multitudes. Hallelujah. Friends, Jesus is called the desire of all nations. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now that's why it's very important for you as a child of God, uh, for you to understand that what you're involved in, when Christ has come into your life, is not just a religious, it's not a storybook thing. It's an anointed life that's supposed to produce results. Are you here somebody? So we can expect results in our lives. Amen. And I want to tell you something, that the anointed one is working on the most difficult and complex circumstances of your life today. Right now, as you're here listening to me, God is working behind the scenes. I said, God is working behind the scenes. I said, God is working behind the scenes. I said, God is working behind the scenes. <laughs> Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6, let your lifestyle, your conversation be without covetousness. Don't ever sit down and, um, and, and, and covetousness means that um, you come to a place where you have an unhealthy affection towards what somebody else has or what is happening in somebody else's life. Why? Because the source of goodness can never run dry. God is a sea that never runs dry. That why you, that's why you can rejoice at your brethren's elevation. Are you here somebody? Not just because you're next on the line, because that must also be, have a selfish connotation that, you know, when I see something happening, I know I'm next in line. No, it's not a matter of next in line. It's a matter of fact that the God you're connected to is see never dry. No end of miracles there. And guess what? Your God loves you. If he loved you enough to send Jesus for you, then what is it that is in front of you right now? Are you here somebody? So our, our brethren's elevation is a prophecy that God's goodness has not finished. Are you here somebody? And so, when we see this multiplication of, of disciples, when we see people coming, why do we invite people into the kingdom of God? Not just because we want to see a swelling in numbers, necessarily, in a physical location. But we have a genuine heart desire because the Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Has the Lord been good to you? Are you sure he has been good to you? Maybe every single thing you are believing for hasn't happened yet. But the Lord is good to you. I said the Lord is good to you. I said the Lord is good to you. 
can you can you sincerely say that when you're when you're sharing your testimony to somebody that doesn't know Jesus can you sincerely say that when you come to know the Jesus I know your life will be at peace your life will be at rest your life will know joy are you here somebody so we ought to ex see we ought to the expansion of God's kingdom ought to delight us are you here somebody that souls are being rescued from hell are you here somebody that people's eternal destiny is being altered. That people are not going to breathe their last breath on this earth and be lost when they get to hell. And be lost. I've heard a consistent testimony. It is consistent with the scriptures. Because revelations that people have that are not consistent with the scriptures, uh, they, may, they may inspire us, but I won't take it to heart unless it's consistent with scriptures. But the Bible talks about the gates of hell. And the gates of hell are literal gates. And there are testimonies from credible people that we trust. People like the late Kenneth e. Hagen and other people. I mean, so many testimonies. They talk about a hideous creature that welcomes people at the gate of hell. That you will hear literal gates screech opening. And in your spirit, you know that if you pass through those gates, you can never come out again. Listen to me. You're looking to God because you're, 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 God has not yet given you the husband you desire or the miracle you desire. I mean, it has not, God has given you in Christ. Let me rephrase that. That's wrong. He has given you in Christ. It has not yet manifested. But let me tell you the truth. Rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice! That because you're connected to the eternal, the, the heaven, then you have a right for heaven on earth. No demon can keep your destiny bound. As long as you are in faith, as long as you are in faith, your desire will manifest. Heaven, you are plugged into heaven. Rejoice that you are a child of God. Rejoice that you are a child of God. Rejoice that you are a child of God. Rejoice that God is your father. Rejoice that you are connected to heaven. Rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And if your eternal destiny is sealed, then your temporal destiny is a piece of cake. What is that mountain before you? Christ has received you. You are his family. You are, you are, you are his child. He's, he exists forever at the right hand of God, making intercession for you. What is it before you that cannot be conquered? That's why the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Too late, devil, I'm a child of God. If you cannot stop me from getting to heaven, you can't stop sickness from getting, leaving my body. You can't keep me down. You can't keep me broke. I rejoice in the Lord today. I rejoice all the time. I rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Let me tell you something. Rejoicing is the atmosphere of heaven. If the devil can't keep you from smiling, he can't keep your miracles from coming. You have to learn how to operate in the supernatural, in supernatural strategies. Notify your face that you are loved by heaven. Notify your, your face that if you're the only one on this earth, Christ would have come for you. And if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for you, how shall he not also with him freely give you all things? I tell you the truth, money is coming to somebody's pocket. Good money. I tell you, something is changing your life. Seasons are shifting in your life. Though the cause for tears of pain will soon be converted to cause for tears of joy. Listen, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus has already become our midnight. Now it's time for joy. Now it's time for rejoicing. Don't wait till the money comes. Don't wait till you see it. Right now by faith, declare my God is good to me and I will rejoice in him. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice forevermore. I say rejoice forevermore. I say rejoice forevermore. That thing that's disturbing you will soon become a testimony. It will soon become a testimony. It will soon become a testimony. That thing that the devil is telling you God can never do right in his face. You see your God doing it. For he has set a table before you in the very presence of the enemy. He has, he has, he has anointed your head with oil. He has caused your cup to run over. Glory to God. Surely goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your very long life. Because you dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Somebody's money is coming right now. Somebody's answer is coming right now. Somebody's miracles manifesting right now. I will bless the Lord at all times. Ah, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come, let us praise his name together. Are you here, somebody? Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never, ever, assuredly, never leave you. So that you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. 
Who art thou, O mountain, before Dunkagong World? Who art thou, O building project, before Covenant World Christian Center International? Oh, before us, you have become a plane in the name of Jesus. But he shall remove the capstone, the headstone, the most difficult part of the equation of success. He will remove it by shoutings of grace. You better shout grace to that situation. You better shout grace tonight. You better shout grace tonight. You better give it a double portion of grace. You better shout grace, grace tonight. You better shout grace, grace tonight. Oh, he will move the most difficult part of the equation. I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? Don't let that devil lie to you. Nobody, nobody is beyond the age of a miracle. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 1, or 50, 52 verse 1, look to Abraham your father, look to, and to Sarah your mother, look from the rock from whence you are dug, the hewn from pit from which you are dig, you are dug out, and, the, and look to the stone from which you are cut out. Look to Abraham your father and Sarah your mother. I called him alone and I blessed him. Glory to God forevermore. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? He said, and tells you, if you're an eligible mother and you've not yet carried your desire in your womb, and said, and is telling you that you're passing age, refer him to Sarah. Or, God devil, how old was Sarah before she contracted her? Refer him to Abraham. It was not too difficult for Abraham. It was not too difficult for Sarah, for God to do it for Sarah's life. You are the seed of Abraham. It's not too difficult for you. I'm here to announce to you that you are right on time for the greatest miracles of your life. You are not too late. You are not too late for the millions. You are not too late for the billions in dollars. You are not too late to be a mother, a father, a husband, of a husband or a wife. You are not too late. No, that, that, that devil is a liar. He said, he said, he said, the flower of your age is passing. You will no longer be desirable to men. Well, who made the flower? Who made the time? He said, all seasons, time is in his hands. You better get a miracle mentality. You want a miracle, you better consult the right people. Stop consulting the wrong people. You better live in the realm of divine possibility. That's why they call it a miracle. Natural law is suspended. I'm not interested in anything that is easy. I want to give God something difficult to do. Because he said, I'm the Lord of God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? It's when Sarah and Abraham, everything natural and biological stopped. If Abraham and Sarah's life, even the highest and greatest genetic technology, or what do you call it now, um, infer infertility treatment, cannot help a 90-year-old woman. No DNA treatment can help a 100-year-old man. God brought it beyond the realm of science. He knew that in our day they'll be doing fertility treatment. Not, I have no wrong, nothing against fertility treatment. But God takes it beyond the realm of man to show that he is God. I am the God that of all flesh. Is there anything to add for me? You will still have that international franchise, that global business, that picture God showed you of ministering around the world in the, in the biggest stadiums on this earth. You will live in it. You will walk in it. You better tune your mind to the right place, my brother, my sister. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything to add for me? My God, my God, my God, my God. This is a house of bread. This is a house of miracles. This is a house where naturally, natural human impossibilities turn to divine possibilities. This is a house of miracles, signs and wonders. In this place, nothing shall be impossible. In this place, nothing is ridiculous. In this place, the ridiculous becomes the miraculous. In the word of our dear brother, Benjamin. I sense in my heart miracles. Sister Comfort captured the, the, the rhythm of the Holy Ghost tonight. There's great joy in this house. There's great joy in this house. If only the Holy Ghost will open your eyes to show you where he has brought you now. You could disconnect from yesterday. And you give him praise every day in your life. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? God is marking your life with great joy. Great joy has to do with manifestations of the goodness of God. That great scripture in Psalm 31 verse 21. Blessed be the Lord my God. He has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. He has done things for me that are too difficult for men to do. I'm not interested in easy things. I don't want, I, I don't want no cheap building project. You see this building project you're seeing? The Lord told us that on your way to your... On, he said, he said I'm going to, you're going to build a tent. He said, a tent on your way to your next prepared place. So even this tent is a, is a comma. It's a transit place. I don't, I, I don't want anything in my life God cannot do. I want to take it to the realm that if God does not do it, I'll be a, an international disgrace. And so when I put myself like that, I know that when God steps in, I'll not be an international disgrace. I'll be an international testimony. Some of you are believing too small. You're dreaming too small. That's why God has not involved himself. 
Because somewhere, somewhere, somewhere you can take the glory and say it's your smart, it's your expertise. God wants you to give him a project by the Holy Ghost that's too big for you to do. So when he comes on the scene, you just be on your face flat. Knowing that God gave birth to this. And I have good news, gospel news for somebody. He said, will I bring you to the place of birth and not push you out to bring forth? God does not abort dreams. God does not abort dreams. If it seemed like you failed, get up, dust yourself, go back again. Even Elijah, when he was praying and prophesied that rain will come, he went back seven times. The great Elijah. Are you here, somebody? Please sit down. So let your conversation be what conversation be. Content with such things as you have for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is your helper. He has not despised you, don't despise yourself. He has not counted you out, don't count yourself out. I will never, ever, assuredly never leave you nor forsake you. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? So when they began to see believers multiply, that's why we bring people to the kingdom of God. Not because we want to say, Covenant what is the greatest church in this region or whatever. No, because we want to introduce people into this divine life. Into this divine life. Into this divine life. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. And I tell you the truth, thus far God has helped you. But he will yet help you. You will yet become an advertisement of the goodness of God. I know you have seen some small goodness, but you are about to see quantum goodness in your life. This is your month, child of God. This is your month of great joy. Somebody jump to your feet and shout, This is my month of great joy! This is my month of great joy! I believe the word of the Lord! This is my month of great joy! Oh, give the Lord a shout of praise! Give the Lord a shout of praise. This is my month of great joy. I believe the word of the Lord. Blessed is he that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things the Lord has said to them. I've often told us in this house, nobody can talk me out of the supernatural. You are too late. Ah, nobody can talk me out of miracles. Nobody can trivialize miracles in my life. Miracles are on the forefront of God's program. Are you here somebody? Great joy has jumped on you. This great joy, this anointing will answer the questions in your life. It will answer the questions in your life. Those things in your life that seem to have defied answer. It will answer the question in your life. Just be foolish enough to believe God. Be foolish enough to dance and sing when the devil wants you to cry. Be foolish enough to believe God. They say you keep coming to church. Very soon they will see the result of your coming to church. Even before the mega miracles. As a matter of fact, there's nothing like a mega miracle. In God's eyes, all miracles weigh the same. Are you here, somebody? It's the power of God that brings you to come to pass. So you must shake yourself. You must shake that devil into the fire. You must dust yourself, oh child of Zion. You must dust yourself, daughter of Zion. Oh, son of Zion, dust yourself. And wear the garment of praise. Show God you believe him, for goodness sake. Show God you believe him. Refuse, re refuse, to, refuse to allow the devil to sow and to fit you and to make you a tailor-made garment of heaviness. Exchange it for the garment of praise. You say, Pastor, I was talking like this because by the time every church member gives him 1,000 naira, you know what will be in his bank account. Let me show you what's in my bank account today. I'm not preaching by, by my bank account. I'm preaching by my heavenly account. I'm preaching by the word of the Lord. That's what powers my life. Bank account or no bank account, we're going to live well. We sow our seed. We rejoice in the Lord. We call forth our harvest. We will live well. I said we will live well. It's going to keep getting gooder and gooder for you. Gooder and gooder. Yes, the good life is yours. The soft life is yours. The easy life is yours. I don't care what they say. Life is getting sweeter for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is our season of great joy. I said, great joy. Great joy. I said, great joy. I said, great joy. I said, great joy. Please sit down. Then Philemon verse chapter 1. Only one chapter in Philemon verse 7. The Bible talks about Philemon. Paul the apostle writing about his son in the Lord, protege Philemon. He said, brother, it's, all, it's common news concerning you that you refresh the saints. My God. I said, my God. I said, my God. You know why God does things for you? At every level that God is helping you help others. Hello? I'm telling you the secrets of great joy. You want to see this anointing increase in your life? At every level, God is helping you help others. Every one of you, at, at, listen to me now, is helped of God. Are you here, somebody? 
The Bible said that he comforts us he, in our troubles and tribulations so that out of that comfort, we comfort other people. So every day of your life, something must be going out of your life, child of God, to bless somebody. A prayer, a word of encouragement. Are you a somebody? Somebody needs 10,000. You don't have 10,000. If you have 500, give him, put it in hand and say, I'm agreeing with you. Are you a somebody? Let your life be a flowing river. I'm telling you the mysteries of great joy. So your life will constantly be oiled. Moving upwards and forwards. Are you a somebody? So I just felt by the Holy Ghost that these things need to be established in our hearts because these are the mysteries of great joy. It's not one massive, but sometimes the simplest revelations can be the most difficult for saints to understand because they're looking for something that doesn't exist. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice, that is a gateway into an anointing that will change your life. If you just do what God said and do what you know, God will show you what you don't know. This Christian life is not hard like people are making it. It's not hard. That's why I don't like the word hard. It's not in God's vocabulary. The Lord Jesus said, my burden is easy, my yoke, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Where did you get hard from? Where? The only place where you see hard is when God is saying nothing too hard for him to do. So where do you get this? Because of hard work. Where do you get it? God just says diligent work. Diligent work. We work under the anointing of God's spirit. Are you here, somebody? Do you know you can have an anointing on you and you can work and work and work and work and work and not even know you're working? Let's not remove the place of faith and the grace of God. And I'm not talking about spooky and weird. I'm talking about this is, these are the realities of God's economy. We trivialize the Bible because of sense knowledge or because of the realities of this world. We'll never live a supernatural life. Oh, you, you will never find the word hard in my vocabulary. Life is not hard for me. I don't care if I'm going through the greatest challenge of my life. Life is not hard for me. Oh, joy is oiling me, lubricating my spiritual engine. So I will go through fire and it will not consume me. Didn't you read this somewhere? Didn't you read this somewhere? Isaiah 43. You will pass through the fire. It won't kindle on you. You will pass through the waters. They will not overflow you. Listen, the other day I woke up. Early in the morning, and these days God does that for me. I, I just wake up with a, a, a burning scripture in my heart, and that's my devotion. I keep meditating on it as the sun before the sun rises. And he began to instruct me again about the use of my tongue. And from James chapter 2, I saw he said, The tongue determines the very course of nature. The tongue will set your finances, the tongue will set your family life. Sometimes you need to wake up before the sun rises and begin to set your day and speak into it. Are you a somebody? Your tongue determines where your body goes. Your tongue determines the direction that your finances and that your life go. Let's just believe these scriptures. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit of their own. Somebody said, Pastor, I've been tithing. I've been giving. I've been serving the Lord regardless. Where is my harvest? Oh, that question may cancel your harvest. Don't say, where is my harvest? Say, my harvest cometh. As you keep declaring that, if it's wisdom, you know the Holy Ghost will give you wisdom. Are you here, somebody? You need to agree with God. And stay in agreement with him. But let's go to Revelation chapter 12. For the thing that's burning my heart won't take me long. We'll take communion now. One manifestation of great joy results is a manifestation of great testimonies. And I hear the Holy Ghost say, my people have testified, but they will yet testify. <laughs> oh. My people have rejoiced, but they will yet rejoice. My people have walked in joy, but they will walk in great joy. That was the word of the Lord. I'm taking my people out of May with joy. I'm bringing them into June with great joy. And so one of the things the Holy Ghost told me is that great joy is a manifestation of great testimonies. Sarah Hoya, lift up your hands. Let the anointing of God's spirit come upon you. Let the spirit of God overshadow you. Let these words be worked into your soul, into the fabric of your heart and your mind. And let this anointing begin to discharge in your life in the name of Jesus. Let it begin to affect every area of your life. Let it touch your money. Let it touch your relationships. Let it touch your, let it touch your ability to be used by God. Let it make you attractive to the right people. Are you here, somebody? Let it start a remembrance of you. Like it started a remembrance in the, in, the, in the mind of King Artaxerxes concerning Haman or concerning Mordecai. Let it, let it start a remembrance of you. Verse 10, look at verse 10, verse 9, verse 9. 
Glory to God. I said, 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 glory to God. If you knew what is ahead of you, you will shout. If you knew what is ahead of you right now, if you knew the next thing that's about to come into your life, you will give the Lord your God some glory. If you knew God's plan to change your story, if you knew what God is introducing into your life, if you knew what God is bringing into your space, you will give him some glory. You will give him some glory. I say you give him some glory. Please sit down. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which accused them before God day and night. This is a, 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 a scriptural rendition of, 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 of Satan's rebellion and how Michael was used by God. Michael, the might of God, the strength of God, that archangel was used to cast him down. Are you here somebody? Which accused them before our God day and night. Let's go on. And they overcame him. Keep me there. They overcame him. Obstacle. They overcame him. By the blood of the lamb. Just keep me there, sir. Oh, my. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Now look at this. Don't take me there. Just leave me here. First John 5, 4 and 5. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? We believe in the person of Jesus as our Savior. And we believe in what he did as our right not to no longer be harassed by the devil in this world. That's how we overcome it. I don't care what it is. Financial life, marital life, they overcome him by the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb signifies Jesus giving his life for you. That's what we celebrate in communion. It's life for life. When you understand that, no devil can threaten you that he'll kill you. That it will kill you. No he devils, no she devils. It. Life for life. You know what that means? That if Jesus' life was given for yours in exchange and he fully paid for it, no devil can kill you. No devil can stop your desire from coming. Jesus did not shed his blood in a place that you put like band-aids. Like I was trying to open one thing that somebody gave us, one bucket of yogurt that uh, Dami uh, Dam Larry gave us and everything. And I, in my haste, I took... I asked Chris, my, uh, one of my daughters, give me a knife, and I did it, and then I accidentally cut myself, and blood was coming. I looked at it, I said, God, you've been good to me. This looks like very healthy blood. Just bubbly blood. And I was looking at it, and I said, no. This blood looks very rich and healthy, but this blood cannot save a, micro, a microbe, a mosquito. It cannot heal a mosquito's wing. So I did all I could to stop it and all of that. But Jesus' blood was not shed like that. When they say Jesus' blood was shed, it means his life was emptied out, given for you. The life of anything is in the blood. His blood was emptied out. Every drop of Jesus' blood was emptied out prophetically. It was emptied out of his physical system. Because he stands in heaven right now with a flesh and bone body. No more blood. But his blood is a living thing. And he's speaking before the throne of grace right now. That's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace and not be condemned. That's why when you come to God, he smiles at you. Even when you sin, don't run from him. He doesn't condone your sin, but he paid for it. So when you sin, don't run from him. Run to him. Are you here somebody? That blood is speaking for you. So it's by that blood sacrifice, a consciousness of what he did for us. It applies to my money. It applies to everything in my life. Yes, I will do my due diligence and learn all I can. Put my hands to work. Do the strategy. Do the business plan. Do the this. Listen to God's spirit. Try and enter where God says I should enter. But when all is said and done, I must have his hand upon me. And it's the blood that brings his hand. It's the blood that brings favor. It's the blood that activates the blessing. 
highest place of authority in the universe, the throne of God. Christ's blood is speaking favorably for you. Sir, ma, you are spoken for. Right now, you are spoken for. You have the favor. You have it. I said you have it. God is moving people's hearts in your behalf. God is doing some things on your behalf. Yeah, are you here somebody? Something has been set in the heavenlies for you. They overcame him by the blood. Ah, this boy here, I don't trust myself. I don't trust my wits. I trust him. My heart is constantly shaking like a leaf before him. Because until I get his, a word from him, until I get his breath, I'm not confident. How can, I, how can I leave my house when I've not heard from heaven? Are you kidding me? I'm unclothed. I'm naked. Oh, but when that sweet breath comes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every day I hear, Dunka, my son, my son, my son. But one word. One word. Oh, my God. It counts my soul. It counts my soul. It counts my soul. No responsible husband has a right to go to sleep when you have not heard from you about God for your family for the next day. What are you doing sleeping? Wake up. You have not heard from God and you're sleeping? That sleep is not going to be sweet. Oh. Hear from God, then go to sleep. That's why we stay up. Not to prove a point. That's why we pray. Oh, everywhere I am, I'm praying in other tongues. I'm praying my life depends on it. Are you kidding me? My life depends on it. One elderly woman of God who has labored many years in this city was telling me one time that if there's one thing she'll learn from me, so every time we go for meetings, everything that she just notices me, my mouth is always. You know what this is? God, I depend on you. Without you, I'm finished. All these things they say about Pastor Dunka. Hey, you they cover my nakedness. You're the one redeeming me from anything that would be shameful. I don't. Ah, if it doesn't help me, I can't be helped, sir. You will see my. Now, I was going to use one stupid word, but I won't use it now. You will see my nakedness. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Listen, and by the word of their testimony. Now listen to this. There are two dimensions to this. The word of their testimony. In connection, your testimony about what that blood has done for you. Your testimony about what Christ is doing for you right now. About what he's doing for you at the right hand of, of the Father God in heaven. You know all these things we learned in BCC, BFC. If you've not gone through BFC, shame on you. What are you doing? That's where you find out what we're saying here. What he has done for you. He has made you his righteousness. He has taken your sickness and disease. Are you here, somebody? He has removed the right of the devil to oppress you. He has given you a fighting and a winning chance in life. That you can call on the name of Jesus and God will respond to you just like he responds to Jesus. Just like he responds to Jesus. You keep these things in your mind and you charge the affairs of life. You don't charge life because you have a bank account. That's fat. You don't charge life because your, your, your brother is in the presidency. You charge at life because of who is with you. Who is for you? What he has done for you? You're standing in him. And because he will respond to you based on his faithfulness. Are you here somebody? So that, word, that testimony is number one. You're testifying about what God has done for you in Christ. And as a result of that, the other testimonies will come. And they love not their lives to the death. I'll just make a comment on that because that's not the heart of today's message. They love not their lives to the death. Many people just quote the first two, but all three, three full court, who can break? All three must happen. That's the unselfish life. That's the life of love. They walk in love. They consider others before them. They walk in the love of God. They walk in forgiveness. Are you a somebody? They don't live envious or jealous lives. They prefer their brethren. They walk in love. That's the strength. That's where, that is where the anointing is. Oh, hallelujah. I say, are you here somebody? That is where the concussion in Christianity is. You seal it with a life of love. You walk in the love of God. No devil can touch you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I say hallelujah. That's why I run away from gossip because my life depends on it. I flee from jealousy. I can't afford it. It's too expensive. It will shut down the anointing. They love not their lives to their death. But let's look at this by the word of their testimony. What is a testimony? That's what I want to just leave with you in the next 10 minutes and we'll take communion. <laughs> so, my Testimonies are manifestations of the acts of God in your life. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I say there are no small testimonies. Testimonies are, are the outworking 
or manifestations or demonstrations or operations. Hallelujah. Forgive me, that's just how the anointing hits me. When I use words, it hits me. The outworking of God's, God's mercy, God's, faith, uh, God's, God's faithfulness, God's grace, God's power, God's goodness in your life. The outworking is a testimony. I hear somebody. I said, you hear somebody. Now I'm going to tell you something. I pray you have ears to hear. I pray for myself that I'll hear it too, more than I've ever heard it before. And eyes to see. And a heart that comprehends. I hear somebody. May you catch a revelation in your life that no place in life is a bad place for a believer. May you catch that revelation. You are not where you are because of the place. You're where you are maybe because of the state of your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence out of it through the issues of life. A heart that is able to capture the goodness of God and never trivialize God's acts is a life that will grow in the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. If you can remember what we said by the Holy Ghost at the start of this message, that the key, that, that, that one, of the, the, one of the greatest secrets to op operating in this anointing called great joy, seeing the God, acts of God increasing in your life, are you here somebody, is to move from asking to thanking. I hope you haven't forgotten that. Don't look for a big revelation this month. Though. But that's a big one. It's deep. Let 90% of your communication with God be thanksgiving. So first you need eyes that see. Oh, uh. that, there's, that there's nothing in your life that you trivialize. You see why people grouch and grumble and complain? Because they're constantly comparing with themselves with the next fellow. Run your race now. Remain on your lane now. Because that thing you're doing is not allowing you to see where God is taking you. You don't have a car. Perhaps you have legs. Perhaps. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? God never leaves anybody with nothing. That's why I said where you are is a good place. It's a big revelation. Please hear me with the ears of the spirit. The eyes to see and understand that there's nothing trivial going on in your life. Father, I thank you for these five loaves of barley bread and two fish. I thank you. Because it's not this fish that will feed these people. It's a blessing that will rest upon it. But how do they trigger? Father, I thank you. Lord, you gave us food to eat today. Lord, you helped us go out and come in today. A person that does not trivialize the acts of God. I'm not talking as a motivational speaker. I'm telling you kingdom mysteries. Our thanksgiving and appreciation and gratitude is a multiplier as a lifestyle, as a habit. Everywhere we go, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name forevermore. Oh, Lord, you brought me from Bukuru Park to this level safely. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. My car broke down, but thank God I have, I have, I have money for Kekena Pep. Listen, there's some things that will cease to be a prayer point when you get on this frequency. The Holy Ghost will, God will now inspect Look to your life and inspect what else is missing. You will compare, I like the sound that's coming from this, my son. My, this, my daughter. So I, I want to hear more of that sound. So you go looking for what is not right and fix it. I think this one will, will benefit her. I think, I think she'll like this one. Michael, how you say him? Gabriel, how you say him? You now inspect your life. Because if, if she's giving me, he's giving me this kind of sound with where they are. I want to hear more of it. Hebrews 13 from verse 15. 13, 15. Hebrews 13, 15. By, by him also, let us what? Give off of what? To God the sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips. The fruit of our lips is the food he eats. Giving thanks unto his name. His food, his thanks. Father, thank you. Oh my God, you woke me up this morning. Thank you. The great evangelist R.W. Schambach, known all over the world for signs, wonders, and miracles. One time he came to Lagos in the mid-80s, early 80s, and he had a miracle crusade. In one of the nights, 
He called that word of knowledge for blind people to come. And he came and tested them. About three people who were fully blind. Their eyes were open. Then the fourth person, they tested the person also fully blind in both eyes. But then one eye opened, the other did not. You know what he said? Oh God, let's lift up our hands and thank God for the three and a half <laughs> people whose eyes were open. And by the end of that crusade, not that day, but the end of his time in Lagos, that other eye opened. You see, you need to learn some kingdom mysteries. Tell yourself where I am is a good place. I'm speaking by revelation now. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you're going to stay there. I'm telling you how to get out and how to keep rising up. My God. That your eyes will be open never to trivialize the acts of God. I hear somebody. I say, I hear somebody. Do you know what it means just to have energy in your body? Maybe you don't know. I know what it means to have energy. 2020, the devil almost killed me. Four months, I was incapacitated. I know what, I know what it means to have energy in my body. As I am around a car, house, money, all those things don't mean anything to me. The fact that you're still on this planet, the grave cannot praise thee. Only the living can praise thee. Oh God, this fire will God pass you through. It's not for anything. Time is now that some people just being in your presence, they'll be delivered from that kind of fire. Because it's the things that you go through that, leave, that deposit a residual anointing on your life. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? So testimonies are manifestations or acts of God in your life. Are you here somebody? Testimonies are declaration, rehearsal, announcement of the great and mighty acts of God in your life. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? In your life, in the life of individual, individual a group of people, if you will keep giving God the sound, if you make your mouth keep demo, giving God the sound he wants to hear, you will move to a zone that before you ask, he has answered. Because you start inspecting your heart to check out what is missing, to fill it in. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? So what is the power of testimonies? Number one, testimonies glorify and magnify God. Let's look at this quickly. Psalm 50 verse 14 and 15. Testimonies glorify and magnify God. If you can't come and say it in church, if you can't, if, if you're too ashamed to, if I, why should you even be ashamed? I wonder. If you can't get it recorded on video, write it out. Let it be told. The more, I'm going ahead of myself, but it's okay. The more you tell of God's acts, the more he multiplies them. Let nothing be trivial in your eyes. I tell people, if God gives me, if people give me one toothpick, <laughs> some people, it has not even entered their heart, somebody's heart to give them toothpick. Some people enter their heart, somebody else's heart, but they never acted on it. So that all equals zero. Are you here, somebody? The ability to inspect your life and understand the movement of heaven that has even kept you where you are. And to make it an, 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 act, an issue of testimony continually. Are you here, somebody? Is what multiplies the acts of God in your life. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Look at this. And call unto God in the day of trouble. Verse 15. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. So it tells us the, the key to that verse in the beginning. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Do it as a, as a sacrifice. Pay thy vows unto the Most High God. Call unto me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Hallelujah. Are you here somebody? God wants the stories of his goodness, greatness, and mighty acts to be told or spread abroad. He wants it told. He doesn't want you silent about what he's doing for you. So I dare you, I dare you to make every day a testimony day. Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come, let us what? Exalt his name together. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
They say, oh, it's another day. We've come to serve a shah. Do you know what God did for you today? I said, have you seen what God has done for you today? May your eyes be open to see. Give the Lord a few seconds of thanks. Just lift up your hand to heaven. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Something is happening. I said 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 something is happening. happening. We don't have the time tonight, but in Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20, we see this. Hallelujah. When Jesus went across the lake after he had, the, he, had, he had been challenged and he went into the country of the Gadarenes and the Bible said there was a madman there possessed by a legion of devils. You know what a legion is? 6,100 foot soldiers. 726 horsemen. So a legion is 6,826 devils in one man. 6,000. Do you know the capacity of the human spirit? 6,826 devils. And the Bible said Jesus cast him out. And the Bible said when after that, after that, this, this man that had been terrorizing the entire area, after that when Jesus was about to, got on the boat, about to go back across, the man fell down before him, worshipped him and begged him, come on, let me follow you, let me follow you, let me follow you. And Jesus said, no. It's not for you to follow me. That's not your job. He said, go back and tell all the good things the Lord has done for you. And the Bible said that guy went around Decapolis. Ten cities. One man. Ten cities. Declaring his testimony. And God anointed his testimony. He harvested souls for Jesus. In Mark chapter 7, you discover Jesus went back to those ten cities. And those ten cities were ready for him because of the work of that man. Oh, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Do you know something? When you tell of God's goodness, he will multiply it in your life. He will keep escalating the testimony. Some of us have been too quiet because we think it's not a big thing. I make our wait until tell that car come. Make our wait until nine zeros come. No, 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 no. Every movement of God that you do not trivialize will increase. Glory to God. Before you know what's happening, there's a tsunami of God's grace around about you. Make your mouth, publicize it. Find a way to publicize it by way of testimony. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? Thank you, Lord. Oh, we don't have the time tonight. The testimonies. Glorify and magnify God. God wants stories of his goodness, greatness, and mighty acts to be told and spread abroad. Are you here, somebody? No, we are not liars, but it's a matter of focus. You say, eh? let's be real. The devil is working. If the devil is working, God is working much more. Are you here, somebody? Like we always say, if you think you lost something, God is the only reason why you have not lost everything. Glory to God. So you can't beat people like this. The anointing will keep multiplying. It's just like they say this. You have a glass and you put it halfway. And you ask somebody to describe what the contents of that glass. Somebody look at it and say, it's half full. Somebody look at it and say, it's half empty. Who was right? All of them are right. It's the perspective they had. The half empty is the man going down. The half full is the man going up. Which one are you? I said, which one are you? I will bless the Lord at all times. He's praised. I'm telling you mysteries to great joy. Some of you are looking for some Greek and Hebrew exegesis. This is what I'm giving you now. How to increase in this practical anointing. This thing will, this thing will change the quality of your food. Then parables. This will change your wardrobe. This will escalate the favors in your life. It will make you attractive for praise. It's comely. Praise makes the righteous attractive. Are you here, somebody? In your, in your room, in your quietness, of, in your privacy, you can disorganize the devil. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I've told you of this testimony over and over. I never forget it. Um, uh, uh, Baba Adebu, he told it. Uh, one, one of the people in, in the U.S. She went there and the husband left her. Children to feed. That kind of cold system. 
Nobody, I'm cold, meaning no empathy. I mean, it's just cash system. If you, if you don't know anything, you die. You starve. So one day, there was absolutely nothing for the children. She wasn't eligible to work. She had not gotten her papers. So she, was just, she didn't want to be illegal. So she just stayed in the room. She just took her tambourine. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercy. The children were, 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 were crying. Said, Let's begin to sing. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, you have been so good. You are children crying. Oh, not one, not one grain of rice in her house in America. Husband left her. In my life, every day. Oh, Lord, you. 30 minutes. One hour. Two hours. Three hours. After what they Open the door. In America, stark white man that doesn't know her anywhere. Not even Christian or anything. So I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm sorry, madam. I, I, I don't know. Could you use some groceries? Two packs. Groceries are food in America. Two heavy packs of groceries. I think I can use it. Not known her from Adam. I have seen the Lord's goodness. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies and compassion. The multiplier is in the house. The multiplier is in the house. The Lord told me this evening in the office, I'm multiplying somebody's money. You are so good. I'm multiplying somebody's health. Excellent. In my life, every day. Oh Lord, you are me so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent. In my let me tell you how to make the money come. Let me tell you how to stop and quench the fiery darts of the devil. Let me show you how to de destroy and cancel and terminate the determinate counsel of the devil towards you. Because the devil said, Where's the lost goodness? Look at her. Let's be let, let's be practical and real. That's why I don't like about all you Christians. Be real, be real. Look at this, look at this, look at this. You know how you answer the devil. We show you negative things, you answer him. With the thing that God likes. You magnify your God. Are you here somebody? I'm not joking with you. I'm telling you secrets to great joy. Glory to God forevermore. God will start moving. Hi, tonight is a night of multiplication. No? You know, the time has gone. So I want, I want to be faithful to my covenant with you. It's important to just say what the Lord wants us to say anyway. And, and leave it at that. And trust the Lord. With the results. But look at this. The Lord said, let me show you how to move from testimonies to great testimonies. Let me show you how to move from joy to great joy. Are you here, somebody? Let me show you how to move from multiplication to great multiplication. Let me show you how to move from increase to great increase. Are you here, somebody? And this is what the Lord said. Don't keep quiet about my current blessing in your life. That's why I said, may you have eyes to see. He has to hear. It's not, it's not comparing you and the other fellow. It's you and God. The determination of God's faithfulness in your life. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Look at the psalm. He said, I will bless the Lord. How many times? How many times? Ah, what does all mean now? Ah, I give you pass mark. Honorary doctor of science, I dash you. All means all. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Ah, the righteous shall hear. That's why everywhere I go, God, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. When I look at great men, I see their habits. When I come into the presence of my pastor, Bishop David Abioye, hey, before I leave, if I stay one hour with him, maybe I said, thank, glory to God 1,000 times. Amen. Praise God. Nunca. Hallelujah. Praise God. How's your wife? Yeah, my sucker. Glory to God. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> so if I say I have Greek and Hebrew, where am I? Where is he? <laughs> the servant wants to be where the master is. 
So I learned the power habits of the, of the one who is ahead of me. <laughs> like when they trade me today, and somebody was, was, was showing how to, how, to, how to attract hundreds of millions of naira to do a certain thing, a project, everything. And somebody behind us was just talking and criticizing him. Where are you? Where is he? I don't understand people. Though. Somebody is talking from where they are. Decades of experience. You, you are where you are. <laughs> you, you, came, you came to say that. Instead of you to be learning, you're, you're, you're answering. You're criticizing. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is wonderful. Glory to God. Ah, ah. I said, what is this thing? This thing that's making this man fly. I better learn it. I mean, killing myself 100 days prayer and fasting. What is this man doing? Jesus is wonderful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give the Lord praise. He's a faithful God. My, he's a glo- ah, ah. What is this? Ha. You want to be around Bishop Boyd? It's 10 times worse. Jesus is faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Always just laughing, excited, joyful. <laughs> One time I told him, I said, hey, Dunka, if you know what is happening in our ministry, what do we have to do a thousand times more than what you have faced? Get up and be a man and, and rejoice. It cast out every spirit of... It cast, that word cast out the devil from my head. Ah, ah. One little thing happened in the couch. I said, ah, ah. If you want to go where high flyers are, learn their habits. Are you here, somebody? Look at Psalm 145. We'll take communion now. I can't. Let me just leave it at that. Psalm 145. We'll read verses 1 to 3. Sir, this June, ma, is your month. Of what? Of what? Of what? Of what? Of what? Take your eyes over what you want and put it on what God wants. In my life every day, I will extol thee, O God, my King, and I'll bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. What? 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 If my bank account is full, if everything is okay around about me, every what? Will I bless thee, and I'll praise thy name for... If you, want to, if you want to terrorize the devil, let thanksgiving and praise come out of your mouth every day. Many times we have to do it by faith. But if you keep up with it by faith, very soon it will be by manifestation. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I thought I was going to preach this on media thanksgiving, but God will give me another message. One generation shall praise thy works to another. They shall declare thy mighty acts. He wants you to tell of his mighty acts. So you're constantly telling our children, you know how this money came? You know how this thing came? Have you sown your seed? Have you given? Who are you giving to? I want them to see that their parents are not the source of their prosperity. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Don't don't allow your, your children's future to be determined by your income. Show them that they can believe God. They want to school abroad. Show them they can believe God. Show them how. You do your papa. Show them how. Don't hide God's mighty acts. This is how it's done. This is how we got here. This is how we got there. Don't make yourself look like a superstar. Be vulnerable. Show them the God's mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and, the, and your wondrous works. God wants the things he's doing to be told. It's criminal not to say what God is doing. You say, Pastor, I'm waiting for a big one. What is big one? Hi. Your life, you're healthy, you're walking. What is big? In Nigeria today? Do you know that 20 people were killed yesterday in Ramaliko government? Do you know people are dying every day in Nigeria? Are you here, somebody? It's a tale to your ears, is it not? Is it not a story to your ears? Don't say you're not blessed. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. That you are the one that can stand now and say, Lord, I'm praying that you help those that are being attacked. And that it's not that they're praying for you to be that. I want to tell you how to increase in this anointing. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. Today is a multiplying day. Things are multiplying in your life. Listen to me. God sent me with this message. 
you will come back on Sunday with your hands full. You will see something, oh. Oh, you will see something. You go see something, oh. I will speak of the glorious honor of your majesty and your wondrous works. Look at this. Verse 6. Verse 6, please. Glory to God. I know, are you worshipping in the studio? Okay. And men shall speak of the might of your terrible acts. I will declare your greatness. Do I have to go further? You know, the Holy Ghost said to me, what is, what are the greatest testimonies, in, what are the greatest things you're expecting of the Lord? How would you testify of them if they came to pass right now? Listen. What level of passion and excitement will you use to testify of them? He said, if you will use the same passion and excitement that you will testify of the greatest things you're expecting me to do in your life. If you use that same passion and excitement to testify of my minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day miracles, shortly you will see the desire, those desires come to pass. The same excitement. Are you here, somebody? <laughs> People come and say, I just walk into a supermarket and I go there just planning to shop with my little budget. One time I went in there and I was leaving and they said somebody had looked at the bill and somebody deposited 20,000 naira cash. I said to myself, Lord, why didn't you give me a word of knowledge? Why didn't you show me about things that were to come? I would have taken more things from the shelf. That's a human being for you. I repented, of course. I said, God, what is this? What is going on? Somebody said, Pastor, it's happening to you because you're on television. Go on television. Go now. Isn't it free? Go on. I refuse to take the work of God for granted. When anybody gives me testimony, that's why they shake. Oh, this one they say pastor you spoke oh, I don't want to hear that it's all oh, the Holy Ghost listen I refuse when I hear brethren testify of what God does in their life I refuse to allow any testimony say, eh, yeah, yeah. no I shake I want, my, I, want, I want to be in awe of God's work hey God give you a loaf of bread today hey just like that they didn't know you they just give you a loaf of bread hi because that loaf of bread can be a bakery that loaf of bread can be a brand new car it's the same movement of grace you see, this is how to cheaply live this supernatural life. You're looking for one big revelation. It is a big revelation. So if you can testify of God's minute by minute hourly acts. And in order to testify, you must have a revelation, a sense. Of, that's why I say, God, open our eyes that we might not trivialize your activity in our lives. I hear somebody. I say, you hear somebody. You put a uh, bathroom, this uh, plastic in the bathtub. And sometimes even with that plastic, you still sleep. Some people, that's sleeping, that's the end though. They're gone. You say, yeah, God, what have you done for me lately? Eh? Ah, please, oh, don't, don't do that. I don't, I think I've said enough. Go and meditate on what I've said. Just meditate on what I've said. This anointing is in the house. Great joy. Is a multiplier of testimonies. It's going to move your, you from the realm of testimony to the realm of great testimonies. Move from the realm of joy to great joy. Great manifestations. You just start seeing things happen in your life. And very soon you start asking your life, yourself, God, it's like I'm your favorite child. The way I'm seeing your face, I know you must be God's favorite child. Oh, put your right hand on your belly and say, neighbor, forgive me tonight. I love you. Uh, but I just need for you to understand tonight. I, mwah, I am God's favorite child. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Somebody. Glory! Yeah. Uh, money is multiplying. Testimonies are multiplying. Favor is multiplying. Opportunities to prosper is multiplying. Longevity is multiplying. The voice of joy is multiplying. Listen, your joy level will escalate. Your testimony level will escalate. Very soon people want to be around your house because it seems like good things are just happening in your house. 
The car has come. Before the car has come, they're announcing your marriage. Before marriage has come, they're announcing your breakthrough. Before they're announcing this breakthrough, they're announcing this. They're announcing that. Everything is just falling around you like ripe mangoes of a tree because you're harvesting with joy. You believe this little preacher tonight? Give the Lord a shout! Father, we receive this table of love with thanksgiving and joy. As your people partake of it, let it be workings of miracles today. Let there be an outbreak of miracles everywhere tonight. Let joy be multiplied and flow like a river. Thank you, Lord. Many of you are going to step into your deepest desires with the greatest of ease. Because this anointing will oil your life. Today is a day of multiplication. He's multiplying your joy. Yes, he's multiplying his goodness in your life. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. God is remembering you tonight. Oh, the winds of remembrance are blowing tonight. Father, I thank you. He's multiplying somebody's money tonight. He's making somebody financially viable tonight. Saroho kela mandre feki ho sopradaya. Pando ho ko sapravale ke seke tohori ala mandreas. It's not by might, it's not by power. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. He shall bring forth the headstone, the capstone. He shall resolve the most difficult part of the equation of your success, your breakthrough, your healing. The desires of your heart. He will resolve the most difficult part of it with shoutings of grace. Grace. The person of Jesus and what he has, he has done for us in his sacrifice for us. That's what we celebrate tonight. This anointing for great joy rests upon you. It rests upon you. It clothes you. Glory to God forevermore. And it will distinguish you in life. It will distinguish you in life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'll say it. Thank you for reminding me. And he said, tonight, there is, this anointing brings great restoration. Oh, I see lost years swallowed up. Lost years. You think they're lost, but they're not lost. They have been just assigned. Certain manifestations have been assigned for a certain season in your life. And listen, this anointing is bringing you into those seasons. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Men cannot be in presence of fried fish. You see, there's something about fish. Even if they fry outside, where wind they? They go catch you. They go no say you don't. They go no say you have been around fried fish. May I say this in the name of Jesus? After this communion, men shall know you have been with Jesus. Because you start reeking favor. You start smelling favor. Your smell shall be like a field that the Lord has blessed. Because we're invoking that sacrifice tonight. Are you here, somebody? I said, Are you here, somebody? I said, Are you here, somebody? I don't know if any of you have experienced, but this has happened to me so many times in my life. Many times. Sometimes, you know, I just. I don't know what to tell the Lord. I'm just enjoying his presence and everything. Sometimes I just, from inside him, I just smell. I, I don't, it's not that I've worn perfume. I smell a fragrance. I've smelled some flowers, you know, dandelion, roses, marigolds. I understand those fresh foul scents. But I, I smell oftentimes. I just, it just comes like this. From inside me, I just, I smell an, an aroma. That's, I can't place the scent on this, in this world. I can't say it's perfume. I, the best I can say is like, some, is like the aroma of flowers that are out of this world. The realm of the spirit is real. Oh. And we are on the side of light in that realm. So as you begin to operate like this, your light begins to bring forth an aroma. People will not know why they are attracted to you. No lobbying. People will not know why they just prefer you. See, you can't, you can't be in God's presence and his presence won't rub off on you. Is that aroma? You become like a smell, a, a, a feel that the Lord has blessed. Sir, you don't have to be competing or jostling with anybody for anything. Just hang with God. I'm not even saying you must spend two hours. It's a, it's a, it's a mindset. It's a life of worship. You're just in his presence. Working, eating, drinking. You're constantly conscious of him. In your eyes, he can do no wrong. Just keep blessing him. This anointing will keep multiplying. See, it is too late for you to be poor. I said, it's too late for you to be poor. I said, it's too late for you to be poor. We extract every struggling bone in your body. 
You are not a struggler. No, you're not. The grace of God is all over you. It's the key to it. Oh my. Rakosa prafa hokesa manda kreta koyaba. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spray, but only living One more time, my hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not the deepest fray, but only me on Christ the solid rock. Christ the solid rock, I stand. Yeah, Sinking sand, all of the ground. On Christ the solid rock I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the one more time on Christ the solid rock I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Yereba sereba labor haba laba sekitea. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Go forth in this thy might. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. As you go rejoicing, let the mountains and hills skip before you like little rams. As you go rejoicing, let the most difficult things in your life become simple and easy in the name of Jesus. As you go rejoicing, let the complications of life be demystified before you in the name of Jesus. As you go rejoicing, happen amongst the greatest harvest of your life. You will happen amongst them. Like Ruth, happen amongst the she things that Boaz left for her. As you leave, you will, some of you, you will come back by Sunday and say, Pastor, I just happened upon, happened to be where I heard and they saw me and they think, I happened upon, I stumbled into the... These happenings come to rejoice us. Okay, we, don't, we don't happen into it. Before we know something, they say they want you in Canada. They want you in America. You say, Pastor, sorry, I can't be around for two days. I say, I dash you, I dash you to them. Just happen upon it. Happen upon it. You, you just stumble into it. <laughs> I say, you, you just stumble into it. Hi, Pastor Debo, you told one story. I say, I catch him, I claim him, I rob him for body. Oh, well, your man went and was working in the UK. Maybe some of you have heard it. Or get people, have you? Maybe you would have heard it. Went to work in the UK. And he was just working for a living. He just managed to Japan there some time ago. And he was working in a fast food. And one Arab came. That Obira calls them Arab. So, this Arab man came. And he wanted to buy property in the UK. And uh, he couldn't speak English. So he came frustrated into the eatery, the fast food eatery that this young man was working. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? <laughs> and he was complaining in Arab language. That these people are, what kind of thing, nonsense is this? I'm coming here to buy houses. Nobody's here to help me. They don't want to help me. I'll be asking me. They don't want to help me. And the guy happened to understand Arab. 
So he came and he just said, he happened. So he said, you don't need his own. And what you have is enough. God will create happenings that will match your own. So he just came down and he answered the guy as he was serving him. Answered the guy, what's the problem? What's the problem? He said, ah, you understand how to speak? Ah, ah, ah. Can you imagine I've just been here? I want to buy this thing from these stupid people, rich people. They don't even want to sell anything to me. He said, he said, then the voice, then the man said, ah, but you speak in Arabic. He said, yes, I do. He said, ah, are you, uh, do you want a job? I'll give you a job now. Then the man said, the, boy, the little boy said, no, no, I'm, I don't want to lose my job here. I'm working here, I'm working here. He said, ah, but I'll pay you now. He said, no, I, I, said, I don't want to lose my job. I, it was difficult for me to get this job. They were speaking Arabian. He said, he said, ah, but I'll pay you well now. Then the boy said, no, I don't want to lose my job. Then, then the young boy said, how much will I pay you? Well, I'll pay you. It's, it's, it's not too much, but it will be enough for you. How much do you want to pay me? How much do you want to pay me? He said, for, he, he, he needs him to work for him with, for three months. And for every one of those months, he'll give him one million pounds. It's not much. It's just... Hold, hold, Pastor Dunka. Hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on now. So the boy went to his ogre, took off his apron, gave his ogre. The ogre said, You, if you come back again, I will not give you another job. He said, Bye bye forever. Three months, three million pounds. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in the supernatural. I said, I believe in the supernatural. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you need miracles, you don't need too much English. Because Pastor, uh, the guys are from Redeemer, Pastor Adebu had released the word. Are you here, somebody? So this is your month of great joy. Amen. You will stumble into opportunity. Like ripened fruit, your harvests are waiting for you. Amen. Speak of God's goodness every day. May your eyes be open not to trivialize any act of God. Every, just find ways to give God glory. Every little thing. Harass people around you with testimony. And God will begin to inspect your life to find out what seems to be missing. Because that sound of joy, he will increase it. I hear somebody? I say you're going to stumble this week into things. God is just going to harass people with your thoughts. Put your thoughts in people's hearts. The harvest has ripened. You pluck it with joy. So how do you, you want, you want to know how to move from testimony to great testimony? If you have ears to hear, this sermon today can move you to another level. You have ears to hear. Me, I have ears to hear because as it's coming, I'm hearing. From joy to great joy, testimony to great testimony, money to great money. Health to robust health to longevity, increase to great increase. Never trivialize the movement of God. Let your mouth constantly be testifying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor now. Is it, not, is it hard? Say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, Glory to God. Say, Isn't Jesus wonderful? Say, Praise God. Say, Jesus is wonderful. Say, God is a faithful God. Oh, say, he's a good God. Say, God is good to me every day. And so it is in Jesus' name. I will hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony. Some of you, even as you leave this service, what you will see in your phone, eh? Oh, Sam, make it that dance. Check who ready dance. You know this can't dance when no get rhythm. Some of you, by the time you wake up tomorrow, you go hear one can't test me. Your, 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 your leg will just be like saying a spaghetti. And suddenly you come back on Sunday with your hands full in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is your season of great joy. Great joy. And that anointing is upon you. Go and prosper. Oh. Go and succeed. Oh. Your broke days are over forever. No, not your broke days. The broke days, not yours. Are you here, somebody? Seasons of dancing have come. Seasons of rejoicing have come. Live like a man or woman whose bags are packed. You're done with yesterday. 
You're done with that nonsense of yesterday. You're moving to your future with joy. And God is moving you with great joy. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. This evening is blessed in Jesus' name. The rest of this week is blessed in the name of Jesus. Your life is redeemed from destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, these testimonies are escalating your life in Jesus' name. If you have lost anything, you will find it this week. I say you will find it this week. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout of praise.